Have you ever wondered why identical twins who share the exact same DNA turn out differently in terms of their physical features, behavior, or medical conditions? Well, the reasoning for this is actually in their genetics, more specifically, their epigenetics. Hey everyone, it's Kevin, Milone, and Sean here, and get ready with us to explore the world of epigenetics and how our environment shapes the people we are today. But before we get into epigenetics, let's do a quick review on the basics of genetics. DNA, also known as deoxyribonucleic acid, comprises a double helix structure held together by chemical bonds, which ties together matching base pair nucleotides. Our human DNA consists of four nucleotides, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thiamine. These four bases create over 3 billion nucleotide pairs, which encode for over 20,000 genes in our genome. But what is a gene? A gene is a sequence of nucleotides that codes for a molecule that has a specific function in the human body. When a gene is expressed, the DNA is converted into RNA in a process called transcription. Ribosomes then take the RNA and read it like a blueprint to create a protein in a process called translation. These protein products are what contribute to our physical representation of our genes, like our eye color or hair color. This physical attribute is called a phenotype. One major thing about our genes is that they are less permanent than you may think. Our genes are actually extremely susceptible to changes, such as substitutions of nucleotides, duplications of whole genes, or even deletions of entire regions of our DNA. These changes in our genome can affect the way we physically appear, or the likelihood of us developing diseases. And that's it for the review. Take a minute to match the terms we just covered to their definitions. Well done! Here are the correct matches. You can also check out our glossary of key terms at the end of the video. Now our DNA is a bit more complex than a long string of A's, C's, T's, and G's. In fact, these tiny nucleotide bases actually have their own personal modifications placed on them to control regulation of expression. Now you might be asking yourself, what is regulation of expression? This is essentially the process of whether particular genes are either turned on or turned off. You can think of epigenetics as the factors that work on the genome and affect how the genome is expressed. A really cool example of epigenetics that can be physically seen with our very own eyes are calico cats. These are the cats that you usually see with the multicolored patchy fur pattern which differs from other cats. This interesting phenomenon can actually be explained through epigenetics. Most calico cats are females, and females have two X chromosomes. Each of these X chromosomes carries the genetic code for one fur color type. In calico cats, one of these X chromosomes is turned off entirely through epigenetic modifications. Therefore, when different cells have different X chromosomes turned off, we get patches of different fur colors. So how do epigenetics work? Epigenetic changes happen through the addition of specific chemical groups directly onto our DNA. The inclusion of these chemical molecules onto our DNA forms a distinct pattern of epigenetic changes, which we call our epigenome. One example is methylation. DNA methylation is essentially the addition of chemical compounds called methyl groups directly onto the DNA. Methylation occurs mainly on cytosine bases, and this blocks transcription from occurring. The interesting part about this modification is that it actually silences, or in other words, turns off the gene that is on top of thus reducing its expression. The opposite can also happen. Demethylation removes methyl groups from the DNA, and this unblocks transcription, turning the gene back on. Epigenetic markers can also impact molecules near the DNA, like histones. Histones are structures that the DNA wraps around, kind of like a spool for DNA. Histone modifications occur when chemical groups attach to the histone complex itself. Similar to our example before, entire histones can be methylated. This can silence multiple genes at once. Wow, that was a lot of information. How about a quick knowledge check-in? Great work! 
The correct answer is C. As mentioned earlier, cytosine is the most commonly methylated base in your DNA. What most people don't realize is that epigenetic changes in our DNA actually start before we even enter the world. These changes can start during our fetal developmental stages. To explain this, let's have a look at this figure, known as Waddington's epigenetic landscape. This illustration shows a small ball traveling down an extremely bumpy hill with multiple paths to choose in which direction it wants to travel down. Now if we look at the underside of this hill, we see tiny support beams extending up and creating these different paths on the hill. These tiny support beams essentially represent the different epigenetic modifications that we saw earlier, and how these different epigenetic changes can alter our genomic landscape and lead to different outcomes on a cellular level. Different paths will lead the cell to become a different type of specialized cell, either blood cell, skin cell, neuron, etc. Moving on, we can also look at epigenetics through a medical lens into the world of diseases. Cancer is heavily impacted by epigenetic modifications on particular genomic regions. Tumor suppressor genes encode for proteins, which as the name suggests, suppress tumor growth by fighting against these cancerous cells. However, hypermethylation of these genes can result in the inactivation of many tumor fighting functions, which would ultimately contribute to cancer progression. This epigenetic mechanism has shown to be involved in a variety of cancers, including breast, colorectal, esophageal, and lung cancers. Cardiovascular disorders such as atherosclerosis and vascular disease can also be a result of epigenetic mechanisms. For example, homocysteine is an amino acid that plays a huge role in DNA methylation. It works together with molecules that move the physical methyl groups directly onto the DNA or histone proteins. Therefore, Decreasing levels of homocysteine can lead to global hypomethylation of particular genes leading to the changes in gene expression seen in cardiovascular disorders. As you can see, different epigenetic mechanisms not only result in different outcomes of gene expression, but depending on where these epigenetic changes happen, it can also result in a variety of different disorders. So far, we have learned about the overall mechanisms behind epigenetics and its association with many diseases. But you might be wondering, how does epigenetics impact the average healthy person on a regular day-to-day -day basis? Our individual epigenetic patterning, or our epigenome, is heavily influenced by the external environment we are exposed to. Factors such as smoking, alcohol, exercise, work and occupational risks, and the type of pollutants that we are exposed to can all alter our epigenome. Now let's revisit our first example with our set of twins. Let's say both twins are student athletes participating in cross-country running and are perfectly healthy with no known medical conditions. Yet, on their 19th birthday, twin B decides to go to university in another country. While living away, twin B has taken to the habit of ordering food and eating out quite a bit, leading to him having an unbalanced diet. Meanwhile, twin A has continued to have a balanced diet while studying at home through eating foods such as fruits, nuts, green vegetables, and fish. Twin A's diet has contained a strong source of both vitamin B12 and folate, while Twin B's diet lacked these essential nutritional components. Now when Twin B returns home after graduating, he noticed that he is slower, weaker, and more tired than his brother. He also starts to experience symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea more often. Now you might be wondering if this simple diet change can actually be seen on the molecular level. Well, the answer is yes, we can actually see this through our epigenetics. Vitamin B12 and folate are actually necessary nutrients for our body to create a molecule called methionine. Methionine is involved in the process of moving methyl groups onto our DNA. Therefore, a lack of vitamin B12 and folate from Twin B's diet would result in decreased methylation of their DNA. This could overactivate certain genes in Twin B. This can lead Twin B to develop certain health conditions, such as vitamin B12 deficiency, or even colorectal cancer, which could explain his new onset symptoms. At the end of the day, Twin A and Twin B may be genetically identical in terms of their genetic sequence and may have a near identical genome, yet due to their different diets, habits, and lifestyles, variations within their epigenome will most likely occur, resulting in them having different physical manifestations. 
how about we do another quick knowledge check-in? Please take a minute to try out the following question. If you picked D, all of the above, great work, that is the correct answer. Diet, environmental exposures, and work environment are all factors that can influence your epigenome. As you can see, the world of epigenetics is a big one, but there is even more that we don't know yet. Scientists are still developing new and more efficient methods at looking at epigenetic modifications within the human genome. Through these new technologies, research in the epigenetics field can be accelerated in the hopes of providing greater insights to the mechanisms behind certain diseases. Research within the world of epigenetics could also possibly highlight avenues in personalized medicine and the creation of unique therapies based on a patient's own epigenome. How cool is that? Overall, genetics is much more than a bunch of A's, C's, T's, and G's that get passed down from generation to generation. It is a unique code which is personalized based on our life experiences. From the foods we consume to the places we work or play at, our original genetic code is changed through chemical modifications that we now know as epigenetic modifications. The things we experience in our day-to-day -day lives are what make our genome so unique. In fact, it's what makes our genome our epigenome. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned something new today.